welcome to the next lecture today we will discuss <coughs> the need of modulation what modulation is and what is the need of modulation <coughs> now before we proceed i would like to you know mention some of the facts from antenna theory which uh, maybe uh, you may not be studying in future but in, in electronics and communication it is a core course and they study it in detail in their uh, higher semesters but for us it is sufficient to know some facts one of the fact is which i think most of you must be aware that we transmit signals uh, you know via antenna okay and it transmits signals in the form of electromagnetic waves that is quite clear so hence the uh, speed at which these waves will be transmitted will be speed of light right because light is also an electromagnetic wave okay and now here is a fact which we take from antenna theory without proof right now that from antenna theory it is recommended and is actually to transmit successfully these signals <coughs> the height of antenna i mean the height from the ground level should be at least equal to lambda by 2 wavelength by 2 so suppose if your wavelength is 100 meters then the height of antenna should be at least you know 50 50 meter if you have height of antenna less than 50 meter then you may not be able to transmit the signal successfully now let's take example of audio signals which are the most common signals which we want to transmit via antenna in various cases whether be it radio broadcasting or be it mobile uh, so we broadcast news we broadcast different programs on radio and we talk on, with each other on mobiles so most of them are audio signals and although the actual range of audio audible signals uh, is up to 20 kilohertz but most of the frequencies uh, you know of uh, audible sound waves which we usually speak normal range that lie between 3 kilohertz to 5 kilohertz okay it can be slightly below 3 also 2.5 kilohertz maybe slightly above but mostly it rise into this range okay so let's now uh, right now take a nominal value of 3 kilohertz to make calculations easy let's suppose that when we speak most of the signals uh, you know most of the sinusoidal parts of our speech they are of 3 kilohertz range and uh, you can in fact take this as a bandwidth also now when we convert using a microphone we convert uh, these signals to electrical signals so they basically before uh, you know at the antenna end they get converted into em waves uh, so let me just a moment if we have some ah. so here will i will uh, demonstrate it suppose here is a human being which is speaking something okay and here is a microphone so this is your usual mic wait just a moment ah, that's okay and what we do is this mic converts sound waves into electrical signals right and then we use amplifier okay and in fact we may even use power amplifier and finally if we put it on the antenna okay so how antenna works a different theory it finally gets propagated in the form of em waves that is what i mean now the frequency here okay what is the frequency in case of sound waves so if you uh, you know plot it it actually is that how often the sound waves 
they cross the zeros right now em waves also if you see whatever em wave will be its frequency is also depending upon how frequently it will cross the zeros on the x or x axis so the frequency range in sound waves when it is converted into em waves the same frequency range will be here in the em waves also okay now we that is 3 kilohertz almost which we have taken here <coughs> So they get transmitted at a speed of light when they are transmitted over antenna. Now what is the wavelength? So that is speed of light divided by the frequency. So 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second divided by 3 into 10 to the power 3 hertz, like 3 kilohertz. And it comes out to be 100 kilometers. So antenna height needed is 50 kilometers. If you transmit audio signal after converting to electrical signal directly on antenna, you will need antenna height of 50 km because the wavelength of such a wave is 100 km. It's not possible. So, 50 km, you can imagine that. So, anyone of you living anywhere can compare. Two districts are usually, you know, away 50 km away from each other. So, not practical. Now, what is the what is to be done? So observe this thing that the height of antenna is proportional to lambda wavelength and wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency. That is the key. Now to decrease the height of antenna, what we can do? We can increase the frequency. Hence, the solution is to shift the frequency of signal, right? But suppose I am speaking at particular mode and tone. You cannot force me to speak in a way that frequency is high. I cannot change my frequency. Now, how to shift it? Now, let's uh, let's assume that somehow we shift the frequency initially. So, suppose we shift the frequency to 30 megahertz. So, what will be the lambda? Sorry, it is typo here. C by F. So, lambda will be C by F. That is T into 10 to the power 8 divided by 3 into 10 to the power 6. 100 meters. Height of antenna needed is almost 50 meters, which is quite practical. 50 meters, suppose you assume the radio tower. Okay, radio tower height is usually of this range, 50 meters, 40 meters. <laughs> suppose you make it 300 megahertz. Okay, so height of antenna needed will be 5 meters. Quite normal. You can have 5 meter height, you know. Now, if you want, even for mobile, suppose we in gsm we use 900 megahertz okay so height of antenna will be i know needed is it will be around 5 by 3 <coughs> okay so that is uh, one point some meters so when we speak on a mobile we are usually standing up uh, we are always above the ground level by one meter or so 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 the more you increase the frequency the less antenna height you need now, how to shift the frequency of signal, right? And where is the information related to frequency hidden? We know that Fourier transform of a signal contains information related to frequency. So, we have to shift to Fourier transform now. That is why Fourier transform is very, very important in study of communication. Now, let's assume the message signal, the voice signal is represented by M of T and its Fourier transform is M of omega, okay? So, if I <coughs> just take an example here, okay, so suppose the uh, Fourier transform of, uh, you know, suppose here, here is a, some arbitrary Y signal, M of T, okay, and here is its Fourier transform, M of omega. So, this, just as an example, this, suppose this is 3 kilohertz, minus 3 kilohertz, okay. So, its bandwidth is 3 kilohertz, that is, the maximum frequency, uh, you know, in our Y signals is 3 kilohertz. So, it varies, it, so, it is centered around 0 kilohertz here. Now, what do you mean by shifting? <coughs> Wait. Suppose I want to shift it to some angular frequency omega c. 
सी वी विल बी रिपीटेडली टॉकिंग इन टर्म्स ऑफ एंगुलर फ्रीक्वेंसी और द यूजल फ्रीक्वेंसी दो हेयर इज ए रिलेशनशिप वेन एस ए एंगुलर फ्रीक्वेंसी इज ओमेगा सी द कॉरस्पॉन्डिंगली द फ्रीक्वेंसी इन हर्ट्स विल बी एफ सी ओके सो सपोज वी वॉन्ट शिफ्ट इट टू ओमेगा सी नाउ इफ यू रिमेंबर अ फंक्शन एफ ऑफ एक्स सपोज एफ ऑफ एक्स इज गॉट एक्स स्क्वायर ओके एज एन एग्जाम्पल इफ यू प्लॉट इट लुक्स लाइक दिस राइट नाउ वट इज एफ ऑफ एक्स माइनस वन स्क्वायर सॉरी सॉरी एफ ऑफ एक्स माइनस वन नॉट स्क्वायर okay f of x minus 1 definitely is x minus 1 square it shifts to the function at x equal to 1 origin gets shifted similarly <coughs> our fourier transform right now is centered around zero frequency and the maximum frequency in case of speech we assumed was 3 kilohertz i want this to get shifted so what should i do if this is m of omega suppose i want to shift it to 30 megahertz i should do this operation m of omega minus 30 megahertz so i will get a plot like this here is 30 megahertz right so now the right side point will be 30 plus 30 megahertz plus 3 kilohertz this will be 30 megahertz minus 3 kilohertz bandwidth will remain same but i have shifted all the components now how to carry this shifting so it means we have suppose if we want to shift to omega c frequency then we have to do this operation at the fourier transform now here is one fact that fourier transform is always symmetric for real signals okay so if you are uh, so suppose if you have any function g of t signal you find its fourier transform g of omega now if this is a real signal not complex or imaginary then g of omega will be especially its modulus that will be always symmetric around x axis y axis sorry now there are some examples where g of t itself can be of this type suppose e to the power j omega not t this is a complex uh, signal so for complex signals g of omega may not be symmetric okay now it means that see here is why this fact is important suppose you have a g of t which is a real signal whose fourier transform is g of omega right so since g of t is a real signal g of omega capital g of omega will be symmetric now if you shift it g of omega minus omega c so what will you get around y axis you will get this is the g of omega minus omega c but now if you see with respect to y axis this is not symmetric right so if you just shift it on one side you will get non symmetric uh, fourier transform this one and you know that corresponding to this shift the signal the signal may be, may be complex also i mean that when you transform a fourier transform of a real signal only to one side so the resultant time signal will not be re real that will be now complex uh now i think this is even clear uh, if you if you uh, remember a property that if g of t signal has for a transform g of omega then when you multiply g or uh, when you shift this what happens to the time at time domain it will get multiplied by g of e to the power j omega ct okay you can basically verify this it's very simple suppose you take for a transform of g of t e to the power j omega c t that will be g of t e to the power minus j omega c t sorry plus e to the power j omega t right 
then when you will uh, you can do one thing it, you can write it as g of t e to the power minus j omega minus omega c t and this is nothing but g of omega minus omega c and you see if g of t is a real signal then g of t times e to the power j omega c t is not real it will be a complex signal so now for making this symmetric what we what we will do i will now draw with the red pen so we will shift we will add to it one more symmetric mirror image and this red color part that will be g of omega plus omega c okay so for real signal fourier transform is always symmetric hence after shifting to omega c we need to shift to minus omega c also and add to it now it means for a signal m of t whose fourier transform is capital m of omega we need to obtain right shift plus left shift you know so as to make it real i mean in time domain so in time domain what does it mean here is the modulation theorem if you recall our previous lecture that when you multiply m of t with cos its fourier transform is m of omega minus omega c minus m of omega plus omega c on one side okay okay i think is it typo here i think should be plus now the conclusion is to shift the signal to higher frequency band centered at omega c suppose omega c is quite high okay it's 30 megahertz 40 megahertz 300 megahertz so what you should do multiply message signal m of t with high frequency cosine signal omega c is quite high in other words you can think of suppose we have a high frequency sinusoidal signal a cos omega c t if we make the amplitude proportional to the message signal that is what here it is done amplitude of cos is m of t message signal then the frequency components get shifted to that high frequency component and we know that uh those uh, when when your signal get shifted to high frequencies your wavelength will get decreased tremendously hence you need less antenna height this process of changing the amplitude of this signal cosine signal sinusoidal signal proportional to the message signal that is called amplitude modulation this is the modulation so now on antenna we will not transmit m of t we will transmit m of t cos omega c t because we need now less antenna height and that is the one of important reasons for why we go for modulation okay so there are other reasons also uh, why we go for modulation those reasons we will uh, study uh, in in next class okay till then bye